Greetings to you all. Greetings to you all this beautiful, excellent Wednesday. It's the 6th of June. I want to inform you that I'm going to begin a series of fundamental things about growing food. And Hebrews, feed yourself. We need to learn how to feed ourselves. Yisrael does not know how to feed itself. So the title will be Hebrew Israelites, feed yourself. Now, I want to begin here on this first video with a simple process of growing. Look at what we have here. These are little bins here that, that I pay $1 a piece for them. We have everything from eggplants, tomatoes, peppers, everything that you need to sustain a family. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of labor, but it takes labor. You're not going to get it done by sitting down and doing nothing at all. So you must labor to get it done. It must be a continuous process and a flow. And then first of all, you got to love what you're doing because you know you're feeding you. You can do all, everything here is organically done. Just let me give you a view of that. You see, we have tomatoes and peppers because they interact with each other. We have peppers and eggplants and tomatoes. All these plants are compatible with each other. And there's one thing I will inform you all on. Don't write and say, what do I do? What's the best seeds to grow? I cannot tell you that. Every state has an agriculture school where they have horticulturists and everyone. You go on the website, whatever state you're in, you look up that information. You don't have to do the same process that they uh, 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 tell you to do, but you must do the same process to garden, all right? Let me give you just a little tour. I want to show you something. Now, this is enough food to feed a family of 10. A continuous rotating of food. What, what we have here, there are tremendous, beautiful onions that are coming along. We'll be eating onions here. You see the, there's about five, 600 under plant, onion plants out there. And they will store, certain onions will store for five, six months. And what we have here is all cut. You have basil. We have peppers, we have basil, red basil, green basil. We have all kinds of herbs here. Because this is in the general proximity of the dining hall. So the daughters can come here, they can pick, and they can utilize these things here. We have everything here. I want to show you what we have and show you what you can do, all right? Look at this. We have that. We have the raised beds here. Put the camera on the beds. We have all of these raised beds here. You see that? We have tomatoes, all kinds of tomatoes. We have sugar sweet cherry tomatoes here. Children love them. They love to come out here and pick them. That's what I, why I grow these for my babies. They can come, they can pick. We have this cattle panel to, tr to trellis it up to make it easy. And so we have all kinds of plants. Look, we have cucumbers. Look at the cucumbers here. So we have cukes. All organic. This is not something that is not organically grown. Mmm. It's all organic. No chemicals. You must have that kind of willing desire to do it. That those say they grow organically or raise their cattle and things that, but we can attest here that that's how we do it. And so we have cucumbers everywhere. Look, cucumbers, ah, that's delicious. Different kinds of cucumbers. And look at here, because they interact well with, with tomatoes, look. We have these little red trays that so you can order them. I, I recommend certain feed stores, I, I, I mean seed stores like um, Territorial Seed in California, all heirlooms and organic, Baker Seed, Missouri Journey Seed, I've ordered seed from them from the last 30 years, and they seem to have a continuance of wonderful seeds. Look at this. You see all of the, uh, all of the um, herbs and things here. Come on this side. I want you to see this here. You see, you couldn't eat all this. You don't have to just grow tomatoes, but you can grow lettuce. I'll show you how we... During the process of the summer, I will have enough videos up that you will know how to do these kinds of things, all right? So we have all kinds of things. The tomatoes coming. Look at the cucumbers. Look here. The 
These are heirlooms. This is what we call a white cucumber. Very delicious. I like it. Mmm. And so you got to baby these things and take care of them. Know how to take care of them. Did you see that? Plenty of food. And if you look at this, this is enough. We have what? One, two, three, four, five beds here. This is just for the dining hall. This is the dining hall here. This is where we eat so the daughters can come pick herbs. They can come to pick salads. And all of that, okay? And I have them in different stages, so we're gonna have plants all year long. We're gonna have different things. We gotta pick the tomatoes again. This is right, this here is, these are squash here. Look how beautiful they are. These beds here, I will put, dip, I will put more herbs out here for the dining hall. Long summer, we have, and as I said, I want to show you the different stages of how we do things. This is a simple garden here. This here will be nothing but herbs and things here. I'm in the process of finishing this up. The daughters will be able to section it off in four foot sections, and they'll be able to walk through here and to pick the herbs and different things we need. But just, uh, get just a general parameter of all of this. You see all of this food we're growing right here? On the bed. I'm telling you, nation, I am telling you one thing. Unless you began to learn how to feed yourself, woe unto you. You need to learn how to feed yourself. And you all collectively can do that. Put up little raised beds with your neighbors. You know, it's, it's such, and I must use this kind of verbiage, it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame when you can't even do things like this collectively. This is a small scale. This, what you see here, this is enough to feed this alone, to feed all summer long, rotating crop crops. You can feed a family of 10 or 12 with excess. You can put things back, you can dry herbs, just this alone. Now I want to show you something that's much more, much larger than this. Come on, my friend. You can shut it off my clothes. As I inform you, I want to show you a larger scale of producing food. You, you see the large implements we have? We have tractors of all sorts and things like that. You have to have this kind of equipment, but you can do something a 24 by 30 garden that will grow enough food to feed the community. Now you see how this is tilled in? Our Yavasadak has fertilized this all organic fertilizer. We're gonna lay straw down here, you'll see later on on the video. And we're gonna plant watermelons, cantaloupes, and things like that for tabernacles. So we have plenty of fresh fruit and things of that nature. And what we have here, let me show you this here. We have harvest the broccoli. I want to show you the beauty of how you, it doesn't take, we can't eat all this. All of us collectively eating every day, we can't eat all this. Look at the beauty of that. Look at the greenery and the beauty of that. You don't have to use chemicals. Let me show you something. Look at these beautiful plants here. The corn is coming along, look at this. Look at that. You see that? We've harvested and still we got side shoots. And then we have uh, Brussels, we have Brussels sprouts coming here. But I want to show you a plant that does beautiful. And show you a kale that everyone will love to eat. Everyone. You see this fertilizing near here, the collards and all of this. This is organic. This is organic. We, we will mix it. It's nitrogen. It's phosphorus. We will buy pure nitrogen or pure phosphorus. And we will mix them together in combination so we can, we can fertilize our own things. But look at the green here of that. Look at the rural field. Look how green and healthy that is. Look at the dew on this. Mmm. You can't beat that. I want to show you, show you two kales. My wife loved the Casper. And the daughters have been picking this kale right here. Very Casper kale. This is nice here. Look at this. This is a kale. And it grows beautifully. 
This is Kel here, and they have been stripping the Kel, believe me. They have been. Follow me on down. Cabbages, for sauerkraut and everything. We have them coming along at different times of the farming season. Let me show you. This here is something that they love as well. This is uh, rape. I love some rape. Very delicious. Listen, you're going to have failure. I don't care how organically you grow them, how tentatively. There are things that don't do well, and you experiment, you learn every year. Like the cauliflowers that we've had, the chance to pick some, they didn't do as well. We got cabbages here. Certain brands do not do as well in other areas. Not these ruby reds, they do real well. The corn that we have is a northern corn, and it's not doing as well as it did last year. But that happens, even with the largest of farmers, with all the chemicals. We'll grow corn here, we'll reduce this down starting today. We'll take all this out and start planting corn. But these ruby red cabbages, they take longer, but they do well in this soil. We harvest much, we got greens everywhere, we got cabbages, you see this? This is kale here. Juicing and anything you want, sweet, and all of that. Let me show you here. This is a much larger scale of gardening. It's gonna take manpower and daughter power, all right? Children power. You can't get out of here and be lackadaisy out. All right? This is an aspect of our garden. What we have here, we grew wheat here for the goats. We have uh, peas in here now. We have white clover in here because this would be a place, this is what enriches the soil, all right? So you got to always do things like that. Let me show you what we have here. Look at the beauty of the squash. Squash and everything. We have, uh, these, these are what we will call above ground sweet potatoes. Winter sweet potatoes. These above ground sweet potatoes. You see the straw down? That is the limited, the, uh, the weed infusion into the, you got to work at first hard, then you make it easy. You don't have to worry about out here weeding. But look at these pump, uh, these squash and things like that. Look at them. Beautiful, isn't is it? Aren't they? We have some of everything. Cucumbers. They're growing. Beans here. We do one side of beans at a time. And this is, all these beans here are heirloom beans. Every kind of variety you can think of, from the purple, red, yellow, ramen, every bean, all kinds of varieties. They give us a different, uh, different type of uh, eating pleasure. So all of these are well, but you must fertilize. You have to. And fertilizer, the organic, is not the cheapest, but it's well worth it to buy it. So all of this row is beans. And you that are in the southern region, you know what this is. These are okra. Clemson spineless okra. I love okra. We'll eat this every day. Every day, okra. We will. I love okra. We have the bomber bees busy doing their thing. Look, that's a different kind of, ouch, that's a, that's a winter squash. See the bomber bees? What we have here is a different kind of heirloom okra. I mean, uh, tomatoes. These are, these are what they call Amish paste. We'll make the salsa and all kinds of things for our for our pasta sauce and all of that, we'll make that on these. And so we have a we have a contingency of tomato plants. We have tomatoes, look at here. These are winter squash here. See that? See how beautiful it is? It's very beautiful. Beautiful. 
Look at this. These are the cukes here. Cucumbers. Large. We have all the cukes we need. You don't need that many. You don't need to try to plant more than you can handle. You see this one row here, there is really nothing on it. But during the summer, we will, we will plant all the time putting something down, all right? Thank you. you. See how squash, pumpkins, this time of the year you can direct sow. Put it right in the ground. These seeds were directly sown by me. You just drop them in the ground. You see the plants? Look, let's, let's, I want to show you something. As I said, these are the uh, beans we'll be eating. These, this is the okra here. This is under what we call black mulch. You see this here? This is black mulch. You hear the sound of that engine running? Everything is drip irrigated. You must water. And what we have here, let me say this, we lost the integrity of our own sweet potatoes. So, there's a place in Georgia, it is called Trotman, that grow very, um, the sweet potato slips they grow, they're very, you don't have to worry about diseases and things like that. So these are our sweet potato plants. We have a thousand sweet potato plants and they give three sweet, just minimum, three a piece, that's 3,000 sweet potatoes. We won't be able to eat them, everything from the, Georgia jet to the purple to the white, every kind of sweet potato for your palate, you can enjoy that. But this is a lot of work here. You got to bend your back. You can't get this by sitting on the internet all day. I'm preaching all day, and I preach all day long when I'm working here. What? All right? Look at this. These are boring guards, every kind of sweet potato you can imagine. So we got sweet potatoes here. That's gonna give us tremendous, and look at this now. Don't worry about this because it looks as though that, that has died back. Don't worry about the leaves. What you want is the roots. That's all that matters. What we have here, we have this over and over, look at this. These are our cantaloupes here. Just my babies love cantaloupes. The children love cantaloupes. And these are the watermelons here on the latter end. And what you see here, let me show you. This is what we call a cover crop. This whole garden was covered during the winter. This is wheat. These are wheat berries. This is what we make bread out of, grind. We have our own grinder to make our own bread. These are wheat berries. That's what these are. So why do we not, we leave this, let it lay on the ground to impede the weeds from growing up through here. So if you just take a view of this, the camera will span everything. And look how beautiful this is. Look at the garden. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Cool. Beautiful. And as I said, we're going to do every kind of aspect from husbandry, butchering chickens, and everything so that you. It's amazing that the foreigners, what you call strangers of the year, and they will come to this country, they will get an acre land. They will, they, they will do what you call pasture farming. A little cage with about 10, 15, 20 chickens in there and move them every day, every two or three hours. They have chickens, they have their own food, they grow a little bed of herbs. You got, it's going to take people to do this. And most men, forgive me, I don't want to categorize or stereotype men to that degree. I don't like that kind of being presumptuous. But I say this to any man, you're going to have to work. There was a man that, from the, this city here, 
came to see me on the first day. Teach me how to farm. I said, my friend, I can't teach you how to farm. You're going to have to get out there and work. You start, I'll show you how to start with a little, with a small project. I'm looking at you, man. You haven't bent your waist in a long time. I'm looking at your guts. You, I'm an old man, but I still can bend down. See him touch my toes. I'm looking at this man's guts. Well, and, I, and I'm honest. I said, my friend, start small. Start with a raised bed or something that is eight foot wide by 12. He has five acres of land. Don't try to start like this because you can't do it. You're gonna get discouraged. You're gonna give up. Look at this again. Just look at the beauty of the watermelons. We'll be eating melons here in July. A lot of part. We'll start the same process. Every month we'll put something out, every month. Tabernacle, we'll be eating green beans, we'll be eating corn, we'll be eating sweet potatoes and everything. Just think what you people could do if you loved each other. You frankly don't give a damn about each other. You don't. You haven't learned how to care. The only thing you know that we're cursed, but I got something for you all beginning this Shabbat on the curses, all right? I will show you things, teach you things you've never heard, all right? Look at the garden again. Look, can I tell you all something? This person that's holding the camera for me, he's a very professional man. He works from his office here on the land, goes to the corporation. This man, you don't need to know who he is. If he wanted to, he could be living in a half million dollar house. But he has chosen over the many years fellowshipping and driving the distance to be with us. Yah put it in his heart to come and let's strengthen the work of Yisra Yair. Because there's one thing promised to us. We were born. That's another promise. You're all going to die. Every last one of you. No doubt about that. So we collectively do things. And we learn how to be unselfish. He, the kind of money he makes, believe me, I know. He's an IT professional. And he's not just the bottom rung of the tier. He's a professional to every degree. You understand? Uh, he's, he has a wife, okay? He just, isn't this amazing? This man has the finest of insurance. And yet this man, <laughs> My Ishaw had gone to his home, took a break because his Ishaw was, was, he was in the thralls of her labor. So my Ishaw said, I'll go home. Now, I've never said this, but I knew when she said, well, let me head back. The baby is here, beautiful son, my grandson, all right? He produced his own baby. He's the first man to lay hands on. And you Hebrews uh, that say you're Torah believers, you don't even have the immuna to believe you have for a small headache. Yet he delivered his son, beautiful, no stranger touching him and feeling the vibes of that stranger. Come on. Well, you're just, we've been doing this in the city of Charlotte. We've been doing this nearly 30 years, 25 plus years, over that. And so don't tell me where we started. We started in the midst of the city. We started a community in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. We moved people in together. How much is your rent? Oh, I pay $750 a month. Listen, that doesn't make sense. My, uh, give her that bedroom in your house with that bathroom to her own. You move in with them and you save money. You're too selfish to do that. Hallelujah. Come on, my friend. Let's pan this as we go on. I want to make the last statement. This is beautiful here. I love it. You see, this is what we call drip irrigation. Everything gets watered. That's drip. It puts water on every single thing we have. Uh, listen, listen to me. I don't care whether you agree with me or not. Because first of all, you're not going to persuade me or cause me to alter things here. But I will show any man, any person what we have here. You just dress right. No dresses. Listen, no dresses on the men. I say that to let you know no pants on the women. You don't come in with your titties out and your ass out. 
you come dressed appropriately, okay? And no little short pants on your little daughters and your sons. And no little tank top t-shirts, all right? You come dressed appropriately, all right? And if you want to come, you give me an advance. I, I just can't take any day of the week because you have free time. To show you take an hour or so with you. And show you how to do things like this. I don't mind. I'm going to show you every aspect from greenhouse to starting plants to sprinklers. In this kind of weather, we start our plants, how we have a system that sprinkle and keep them, uh, keep the plants wet, moist at all time. You need to learn how to do things like that. Feed yourself, Hebrew Israelites, all right? The nation of Israel, you must learn how to feed yourself and you don't know how to do that. You don't know how to do that. Why are you cursing? No, I'm, I have the berachai of you, I'm blessed. I have the riches of his fullness to labor, enjoy all the abundance of his blessings. Look at the goats coming. You see, they, they, they know who's out here. You see those goats? You see the goats? We have hundreds of sheep, hundreds, cows. So this is what it takes. It takes a hard labor. But it's an enjoyable one. You sit down with some, with some okra, tomatoes, and corn. Ah, I love that. Sakatash, whatever you want to call it. But it is healthy for you. It's a great blessing. And the corn will pick this corn, but this is a corn that I planted early because it was cold. There are corns that will generate or germinate in cold soil. They are known as northern corns. And this is one. We are a southern state, so we need what we call the southern corn. It needs about 86 degree temperature in the soil, and she will grow like weeds, all right? And so this is the abundance of our blessings here. Plenty of food to eat. We can't eat it all. You see that? We cannot eat it all. We'll grow watermelons, catalogs here for tabernacle, so that we can enjoy ourselves. And the people that visit us, and we welcome you to Tabernacle. Bring your tent now. We have shower houses. You can shower. We have one, two, three, four, and all. But we have two that are very, you, you know, that you can shower there enough to accommodate you. You understand? And you don't have to worry about paying a fee or giving money to buy food. And we will eat royal here. Believe me, some of my homemade sausages. Yes, we will make it out of our own pasture-raised chickens. Some of our beef sausages, I will make that out of butchering one of the cows. Black Angus, all organic. That's what we raise, all right? So this is what we'll do. We'll put down straw to keep the weeds. And so we won't have to labor so hard because I'm getting older every day, all right? Listen to me, nation. I wanted to share that with you, and I'm going to do this at least once a week. And I, I want to get it more professional, we'll do that. But it's going to be a series of teaching and showing us how to feed ourselves. You don't have to have a lot of land, but you can feed yourself. You can eat enough greenery and things like that that will at least make you more healthy. We are very unhealthy people. A lot of our men, they're struggling, our daughters, it's sad. And you're convinced that the drugs are going to work. It's, they're not going to work, my friend. It's not going to work. So we can eat healthy, and we can eat in a way that will benefit our bodies, all right? And this is our benefit. Next time you'll see the watermelons, they'll be growing, the melons of all kinds. You'll see corn in here. Always a rotation. Until the next time, we say to you, our friends, may the riches of Yom Yom Shur rest upon you all, and may he strengthen you all in the comforting of his Torah truth. That it keeps you right. Yabaru, Yabarak, Shalom. All right, let's get it.